And today I have Cindy Little with Waco Ghost. So this is a spooky one for Halloween. Welcome, Cindy. Thank you. <laughs> I'm so excited to have you. Tell us your story. Oh, okay. Um, just about how I got involved in, in the paranormal? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay. Well, I've always had an interest in it. Ever since I was little, I've loved reading spooky ghost stories. And, um, you know, and I've just found it to be fascinating. And so back in the early 2000s, when all the ghost hunting shows came on, I, of course, watched them and thought, oh, wow, there are people that actually do this paranormal investigating thing. And it looks so fascinating. So I thought, well, why don't I try my hand at that? And so there was a rumor going around at that time here in Waco about a haunted couch. And I thought, well, that's, yeah, I thought, well, that's interesting. And I tracked down the haunted couch and it was at the consignment furniture store on Highway 6 and Bosky. So I went down there and asked the owners about the haunted couch. Can I see the haunted couch? And they were just more than happy to show me the haunted couch and tell me all about it and how the people that bought the couch initially took it home and crazy stuff started happening in their house, like cabinets opening on their own and strange sulfuric smells. And it scared them so bad that they took it back to the furniture store. And so, so the furniture people said that they couldn't even have the couch up next to their, you know, where they do the cashiering and everything because it was messing with their payroll systems and their, yeah, their cash register and all this stuff. And so they kind of put it towards, they tucked it in towards the back of the store. And so I went ahead and thought, okay. And they're like, well, you want to come do an investigation? And I'm saying, well, sh sure. You know, I'd never done a, an investigation before. And they said, well, come on back tonight and, and do an investigation. So I, I brought some cameras and an audio recorder and set things up and ran them overnight and didn't really get anything crazy. My phone went dead around the couch. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people's watches go kind of crazy around the couch and the couch is still there. If anybody wants to go see the haunted couch and it's been there for several years, people have offered to buy it, but I really don't think that they're going to, to give it up anytime soon. It's just an old grandma couch that has weird kind of paranormal activity going on around it. And after that, I was pretty much hooked. And I thought, well, you know, I, I can do this and started getting more equipment over the years and having more doors open for me to come in and do investigations. And here I am 14 years later and still loving it and, and having a great time. That is amazing. So tell us what exactly is Waco Ghost? I am a paranormal investigator. So I go into, I, I used to go into homes. I don't do home investigations so much anymore, but I will consult with people if they feel they've got ghosts in their homes. But I go into, you know, a lot of businesses, museums, uh, cemeteries, and and look for ghosts and look for paranormal activity. I'm also a parapsychological researcher, and that's a little more on the academic side. I work with parapsychologists on trying to come up with, you know, doing research and trying to come up with theories on what some of this ghostly activity might be. And we've got a couple of academic papers that should be coming out in the near future. And so that's kind of the other side of it, as well as I teach um, paranormal investigating classes at MCC. So that's pretty much everything that I do. So you found this kind of passion and you just ran with it. I did. I did. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. What is the most haunted place you've ever visited, Waco or beyond? <laughs> I will say the most haunted place I've visited and have visited several times in love is the Palace Theater in Marlin. That is, yeah, 
Yeah, we've done um, paranormal investigations there for many years. That's how I met a lot of the people that I investigate with now. It is the only place where I have seen an actual ghost, uh, you know, the traditional ghost walking and disappearing type experience. Those experiences are really rare. And every time I go and investigate there, we get all kinds of strange readings, electrical readings and some EVPs, which are electronic voice phenomenon. That's where if you set out, and anybody can do these at any time, if they want to go to someplace spooky, they turn on their, say their memo recorder on their smartphone or something and just let it run. And if they get an EVP, what happens is, is they may not hear a voice with their ears while the recorder's running, but when they play back the recording, there will be a voice on it saying something. Oh, they get yeah. chills. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're really common. We we get a lot of those in, in places that we go into and they're really interesting. So, and it's, it's kind of fun and easy to do. I always tell people if they're interested in this, I say your smartphone is one of the best ghost hunting tools around because you can take pictures and do video and take audio and go to someplace spooky and and do some EVPs, see if you can catch some EVPs and take some videos and take some pictures. You never know what you might get. Wow, that is amazing. Do you know why the Palace Theater in Marlin is haunted? <laughs> That's a really good question. I am not Sure. <laughs> and the people that I investigate with, they have a lot stronger ties to the theater and they've been investigating it a lot longer than I have. But I have not heard any of them come up with a reason for why it is haunted. There are plenty of, of ghosts there and ghostly activity that's been there a long time. Nothing terrible or mean or malicious. And so their best guess, at least so far, has been they just like hanging around and, and making themselves known. So that's kind of where we're at there. I can't think of anything in particular that makes that a very haunted place. Wow. Now, what is the strangest paranormal activity story you've ever heard? Oh, <laughs> goodness. Um, there's just so many stories. I, I'm drawn a blank here. I will tell you one that wasn't paranormal, but the people thought it was paranormal. And this is something that might kind of tie into your, you know, home improvement and, and all of that. And that is, yeah, it's like I thought, well, you know, maybe I can come up with a tie in somehow. Um, this family was experiencing these strange fireballs that were coming down their chimney and into their their living room and flying around and sparking and just these kind of combustible balls of fire and of course they were really scared I they didn't know yeah they didn't know, they didn't know what it was so they called in some paranormal investigators to find out what was going on because they had no idea. They didn't think it was anything natural. They thought it was definitely paranormal and you would think so. I mean, that's really strange. Well, the investigators, after looking at the home and doing a little bit of background history checking on the home, they found that it was built of cinder block. And yeah, in the cinder block, what the builders used as insulation was a type of styrofoam type material. Huh. Yeah. So you've got this cinder block home and you've got this kind of static electrical conductive styrofoam in there and the cinder blocks. And then they went out back and the house was built up against the back of a hill. And they thought, well, let's see what's beyond the hill. So they, they climbed up the hill behind the house and there was a, a landfill. So there was a lot of, you know, smell and methane gas and stuff from the landfill. Well, what they figured out was that methane from the landfill was seeping up 
through the floor of the house. And anytime the, yeah, it was crazy. Anytime the like weather changed and got real dry and the, the styrofoam insulation kind of magnified this. And you know, like when you get a static electrical shock and you'll see like a little spark, that's yeah. basically what these fireballs were. They were igniting the methane gas in the house and causing these combustible fireballs. And they were able to, to tell the people, well, this is really strange. It's not paranormal. It's something you should probably look into, you know, making sure the methane gas leak is fixed. And um, I don't know about the insulation, but I thought that was a really strange story. Wow, that is crazy. I know. I know All of methane gas. Yes, through the foundation. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. Now I've heard that kind of explain a lot of ghost lights that happen throughout the country is a methane gas. Mm -hmm. Possibly, ghost lights are found everywhere. Um, I think of the ones here in in Texas, the Marfa lights. Those are probably the most famous ones. And you're out in the middle of the desert. And I just think there are a lot of times they're due to some kind of atmosphere, change in the atmosphere. Uh, nobody really says, you know, for sure or knows for sure what causes them, but I'm guessing it's something in the atmosphere. I remember when I was a kid, I'm from Southwest Missouri. Okay. So me and my friends would load up in the back of a truck you know, mm -hmm. 30 years ago and we would go <laughs> to this place called Joplin, Missouri and right oh, up yeah. Joplin, Missouri. I've been there. The spook light. Have you ever been there? I've been to Joplin many times, but I have not seen the spook light. Yes. Yeah, so we, we just, you know, kind of hung out in the back of a truck and do what kids do. Right. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden the spook light started chasing us. What? <laughs> really like took off in the truck there was two sets of cars and we took off and both sets of cars were running from the spook light and you know i was a kid it could have been you know five seconds it could have been five hours i don't know but, <laughs> uh, and finally after a few miles it quit chasing us but it was really scary <laughs> now okay i'm gonna tell you that was crazy that's crazy I have never heard a story about the lights actually chasing. Yeah. So, was, and it wasn't, you know, if it was just me, I could have been, it might've been what I was drinking that night, but mm -hmm. it was me and all my buddies. And we still talk to it. We, when we get together, we talk about it to this day. Like, do you remember when the Spook Light and Jocelyn chased us? <laughs> yeah. And we're still like, what caused it? And we're like, we don't know. We shouldn't probably talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy I, that's a good you have a really good ghost story that's yeah. a good one uh, that's all I need I'm good <laughs> <laughs> so Sydney do you do courses you do courses at MCC I was looking at your website do you do courses online too yes I do I do a very similar course on Udemy um, and it's investigating the paranormal. It's really similar to the one that I teach at MCC. The main difference is the one at MCC, we're able to take field trips. And of course, yeah, and of course, you know, the one on Udemy, you can't do the field trip. So they get a little more instruction, but it's it's very similar. Tell me about field trips. Ah, <laughs> well, in our fall class, we get to go to the Dr. Pepper Museum every year at the, the, as, the as the final class. I will say that the, the people at the Dr. Pepper Museum are amazing. They have been so welcoming to me and my classes from the very beginning. And they have let us come in every single semester to do an investigation. And now they've even got paranormal tours throughout the museum during the month of October. And I think maybe into November, this is something new they're starting. And so we, we go to the Dr. Pepper Museum. We're getting set to go there in a couple of weeks. Um, we are also taking a field trip to another place here in town. It's, it's a, 
how do I put this? It's a historically relevant place, but they do not want to be known as the ghost place. So yeah, so they're wanting to remain confidential and I'll, I'll respect that. But it's it's a place that I've never had an opportunity to investigate before. And they invited me and my class to come and do a, an investigation there. And so we're going to be going there next week. And then the following week, we're going to be going to the Dr. Pepper Museum. So that'll be a lot of fun. And uh, in the spring, we do more field trips. This, this is more information and a couple of field trips. In the spring, we do a couple of class sessions about how to ghost hunt and what paranormal investigating is and, and how to do that. And then we go to the Carroll Library at Baylor to learn about connections between history and the paranormal. And we take a historic tour at the Cooper House, which is really interesting. And then we, I'm hoping to go back to this location that's wanting to stay confidential and um, going to the Dr. Pepper Museum again. So that class is uh, in April and it's through MCC again. And it's, it's pretty, that's a pretty popular one because of course the people like to go to the the places and do the investigating. And I understand that. I get that. That's a lot more exciting than, you know, sitting there in a classroom watching me blabber on about the history of ghosts. So I get it. Um, but yeah, so that's those, that's kind of the, the courses. So can anybody sign up for these classes or do they have to be MCC students? Oh gosh, no, no. Anybody can sign up over the age of 18 or older they are through MCC's community programs. Oh, wow. I've yeah. Of those. Yeah. Yeah. So we're in the, uh, you know, the little catalog that you get ever so often in your mail, you know, the MCC catalog that shows all the community programs were, we're in there. And I've been doing these courses now for, I think this is my fourth year. Wow. I actually learned to podcast from an MCC continuing education course with Dylan Meek, believe it or not. I was going to say, was that from Dylan Meek? Yeah. <laughs> it was. So I yeah, love I've, the continuing education. Oh, yeah. I've done a podcast with Dylan Meek, I, not this year, but the year before. And so that was really a lot of fun. And, and of course, talking about the paranormal about this time of year, there's a lot of people that you know, want to do podcasts and, and things this time of year on anything spooky. So I, I'm more than happy to to do that. That's awesome. Well, I got introduced to you from the guy that does my eyebrows, Robbie Allen. Oh, yeah. Uh, so he's pretty amazing, but he's also, he's written a book, Witches of Waco, which I haven't read yet. I've been trying mm -hmm. to get him on a podcast, but he just won't do it yet. I'm getting him. Oh. <laughs> He'd be amazing. He should. He would. And he is somebody that I investigate with. Oh, really? He, yes. Yes. And he has some pretty interesting psychic sensitive type abilities, which can come in very handy on paranormal investigations. So he needs to stop being so shy and to come on and, and do a podcast with you because he's he's a very interesting guy and he would be a great guest. Yeah, I'm going to definitely send him this part of the podcast so he can hear that. Yeah, do. Come on, Robbie. Come on the podcast. Don't be chicken. <laughs> he might be watching now because I announced it on my Facebook page. He watches me and I watch him. <laughs> so I saw that you've investigated at the Armstrong Strong Browning Library on the Baylor campus. Tell us about that. That was um, a long time ago. I was really shocked that they decided to let me in to do that. Baylor's not usually real receptive to these types of things, you know, understandably. That's okay. But the, one of the uh, directors or administrators, Catherine Brogdon, like I said, this was several years ago. I don't even know if she's there. She was very open to the paranormal and she said, yes, there have been some kind of strange things going on here. A construction worker fell to his death when the, the building was being built. And we think that the basement might be haunted. 
we've been hearing some kind of strange noises and like the gates rattling because they shut off their kind of gift shop with a gate. And we've been hearing the gates rattling and some strange noises and things. And so there I didn't get to just stay and investigate, but I did leave some equipment overnight and I did get an EVP that I thought was really interesting with my recorder. It sounded like it said in debt. And so I kind of had to laugh at that because I'm thinking, you know, well, there's all these students and they're paying a lot of money, you know, maybe <laughs> maybe it was some poor ghostly student lamenting their debt or something. I'm not sure. Wow. But yeah, it was it's a beautiful, beautiful place. It is. It's gorgeous. You did mention the Palace Theater in Marlin, and I noticed on your website that you did the Waco Civic Theater, which many of my listeners have been to. Tell us what you found there. Well, that one was really interesting, and that, that's another one that it's been a long time. I would love to be able to get back in there and, and do another investigation. It's been many years, but that's a really fun place to investigate. Um, there's been all kinds of reports of haunting type activity there over the years. I uh, Bob, I can't remember his last name. He was this uh, volunteer there for many, many years and just loved the theater and he passed away. Occasionally they will see Bob sitting in the audience when a play is going on. So I thought that was really kind of interesting. And they have what's called the screaming lady that up on the catwalk, they've, seen this kind of shadowy lady that screams, this ghostly lady that screams. And um, I didn't capture her, but I did capture in empty rooms what sounded like footsteps and ghostly people sitting in chairs and getting up, you know, like how chairs will squeak and stuff and, and, the, and the footsteps and things. So we got some of that. And I'm trying to think of, of what else. There's been a lot of reports at the Waco Civic Theater. It's it's a kind of a strange little place. And like I said, I'd love to get back in there and do more investigating. So my question to you is, does sometimes when you go and you investigate, um, like you just, you pick a random night, right? And you go mm -hmm. and investigate and are those paranormal spirits, for lack of better words, you can educate me on that. Are they... <laughs> there every night or do they only occur sometimes so is it sometimes you go and you check it out and there's not much there but there could be something there just on a different night oh yeah you're absolutely right i ask my students at mcc two questions on the first day of class i say are you a skeptic or are you a true believer you know first of all and i usually get of course a lot of true believers some in the middle, this class, there's a lot of them in the middle, which I find surprising. And occasionally I'll get a few skeptics, um, which is great. I, I welcome skeptics. And then my second question is, do you like fishing? And they, you know, yes, no. And then I, this time around, I says, why do you think I ask this question? And they say, well, because ghost hunting is probably a lot like fishing. And I said, yes, that is exactly it. Um, it's kind of like sometimes the fish will bite and sometimes they won't. And if you're a very impatient person and you're just not kind of willing to sit and relax and enjoy the atmosphere and you're wanting fish constantly on the line, this really isn't something that you're probably going to be too interested in because sometimes you'll get some really interesting evidence and a lot of times you'll just have the privilege of getting to be in a really cool building for many hours and that's it <laughs> i mean so yeah it really depends it's very um unpredictable it's not you know and i tell people if you want to get scared go to like a commercial haunted house you know with the people uh -huh. jumping out and boo you know if, if that's the experience you're wanting go do something like that if, if you're not patient and you have to have things constantly happening all the time, you're probably going to get bored pretty quickly doing this. Wow. Wow. So tell us how to get 
number one, how to sign up for the classes. And number two, what's your Facebook and your website handles? Okay. You can sign up for the classes. I don't think the spring ones are posted quite yet, but if you go to the MCC, the McLennan Community College website, they have their continuing education and you can click on that link or that tab and it will walk you through the courses and you can search it. And my spring class is, uh, I think it's local haunts, Waco or Waco haunts. It's something along those lines. I, I, I've got to look up my syllabus. <laughs> um, but, uh, and so then you can sign up online. Again, they have the little catalog that they actually send out in the mail. If you are old school and you want to do it that way, that's fine. Um, my website is www.wacoghosts.com. That's all one word. And my Facebook is, of course, Facebook front slash Waco Ghosts, all one word. It's www.wacoghosts.com. Yes. I'm going to put that so people can see it. And then Facebook, it's under Waco Ghost. Yeah. So what's next for you? Oh, well, <laughs> um, I'm hoping to do more investigations at this confidential location that I've just been invited to, you know, the one that I was just telling you about. Um, I would like to continue to do some more investigating at uh, the LaSalle Shops Antique Mall. We've gotten some interesting activity there. Uh, we that's where a real good history connection is. They called and I'm a vendor there. So I have a, a vintage clothing booth there. And they said, hey, Cindy, we keep seeing this lady in, in black. And so when they were closed for COVID, they had a bunch of construction workers in there doing work and they would step out of the bathroom. This one guy would step out of the bathroom and he'd see this lady dressed in black with the hair up on her head and kind of, you know, old fashioned clothes and the button up shoes and the whole deal. And he thought she was a vendor because there was no customers there. And he asked her, you know, ma'am, can I help you? And she kind of turned and looked at him and didn't respond and then just disappeared. So they said, we've got this lady in black and there was a couple more sightings of her and so they said, come and investigate. So we went and investigated and right where this lady in black was seen, there was this photograph of this old timey photograph of this lady in black with her hair up in a kind of a bun and, and kind of some black clothing on. And so I thought, well, this is really interesting. And so Robbie, you know, who's a little bit psychically sensitive, he comes in and he says, you know, I'm kind of sensing the name Melba. There's, you know, for some reason, the name Melba is coming to me. And we had another uh, psychic that was on the phone and she was able to kind of do a distance reading. And she said, I'm kind of getting the impression that there's a really stern kind of protective presence there. So I thought, well, this is really interesting. So I bought the photograph. And I put it up on the Facebook page, Waco History Pictures. And I said, does anybody know who this lady is? Uh -huh. And it didn't take long to get a response. One of the people said, oh, that's Mabel Legg. And I had no idea who Mabel Legg was, but did a little bit of research and found out she was just this amazing teacher here in Waco. She lived to be 102 years old. She taught at La Vega and she taught at the Waco State Home. And she was like one of the founding members of Highland Baptist Church. And she was, yeah, she was born in 1900. She started teaching in 1918, which would put the clothing about the right era for the sighting of this lady in black. And Robbie got, and they said, oh, and she was a real no nonsense lady. She was a really strict teacher, but everybody loved her because she was a really great teacher, but she was very strict. And um, so we got Melba, we got this strict presence, Melba, Mabel, 
you know, pretty close. Close. Yeah, pretty close. And and so then we got in touch. Well, the family actually saw the, the photograph. And they said, oh, that's her Baylor graduation photo. And can we have the picture? And I said, oh, of course. You know, so I sent them the picture so they could be with the family. And since that time, there hasn't been any lady in black sightings at LaSalle. So we're kind of wondering if maybe some kind of spiritual energy or something wasn't attached to her photo and they maybe were seeing Mabel walking around in in the store when she was, you know, back in the early 1900s. So we thought that was pretty interesting. That is really, really interesting. Wow. You're a great mm -hmm. storyteller. Because the hair <laughs> stood up on my neck several times. <laughs> <laughs> so before I end the podcast, I always like to ask my uh, my people I'm interviewing a fun question for my listeners. So, Cindy, if you were stranded on a desert island and all of your human needs were met, and you could take mm -hmm. two luxury items with you. What would be those two luxury items and why? Oh my goodness. Let me let me think about that. Two luxury items. Oh, cupcakes. I love cupcakes. Yeah. <laughs> I I would have to have cupcakes and my dogs. We have five chihuahuas. So uh I would, yeah. <laughs> I would I would be sitting there on the island eating cupcakes with my chihuahuas. <laughs> oh my gosh, what kind of chihuahuas do you have? Oh, they well, we have this really fat one, Captain Buggy, and he's about 10 pounds when he should be about five pounds. And so he's kind of we think he might be kind of a pug or a pit bull mixed chihuahua. We have a a couple of purebred chihuahuas, one's a regular size. Todd and one's a toy chihuahua, Pinky. She's real tiny. And Ebba is uh, another purebred chihuahua. So those those are the pack. <laughs> I'm surprised your house is quiet because I have one <laughs> chihuahua and I worry like, is Coco going to bark during the podcast? Oh, yeah. I'm upstairs with my door shut and they're downstairs. So, so far, so good. As long as the UPS man doesn't come to the door we're good. <laughs> well, Cindy, thank you so much for being a guest on the Why I Love Waco Sometimes Spouse podcast. We appreciate <laughs> you. Okay. Well, thank you for having me. Bye, guys. Thank you for listening to the Sometimes Spouse podcast, where weekly Christy brings you Why I Love Waco.